Hey, good evening, Facebook friends. I'm here at Dr. Ionello's um, Wellness Center, and I am the technician that does thermography. I'm here about every month or every other month. And tonight we're going to look at a PowerPoint presentation on uh, what is thermography, how it can spot breast cancer years before a mammogram, and we'll look at some case studies of other parts of the body. So um, I'm with I'm a uh, clinical technician with Breast Thermography International, and we are the leading interpreters of thermography in this country. We adhere not just to national standards, but international standards. We're trying to set the standard for thermography. It is an evidence-based, um, non-invasive, radiation-free way of checking your breast. Again, it can spot it years before a mammogram, and it is an adjunct to an anatomical test. Our doctors always suggest ultrasound because that's environmentally safe. So let's look at the slide. Um, we're going to be breaking the myths about breast cancer screening and breast health. So we're going to look at the state of breast cancer in America. These are 2018. We're halfway through the year, so I could up it a little bit. But there's 300,000 new cases in women. There's uh, 2,200 cases in men. And we're from the New York area, and I'm working in the city, and sadly, what we're seeing down there are the 9-11 responders, particularly men that are coming in with breast cancer. Um, that the statistics are showing that one in eight women will get breast cancer in her lifetime. And in the next 10 years, that's gonna increase by 30%. And you know what? We're not being told anything about how to maintain breast health. Why are we having this increase? What's increasing these numbers? So we're gonna look at that tonight. So cancer is increasing from environmental exposure. Um, I mean, you just look at this. Hi, come on in, come on in, come on in. If thank you, you. Can scoop right on in, make yourself comfortable. Hey, how are you? Hi, thank you. So we know that we're living in a sea of toxins, but we're going to look at a particularly group of toxins called environmental disruptors or endocrine disruptors that are making. Um, little girls have breast at a younger age, little boys are having breast, and we have um, in estuaries the fish are, male fish are becoming female, and uh, we're finding frogs that have uh, uh, eggs on their testes. I mean, it's kind of crazy, right? And these are coming from these plastics, these environmental estrogens. So we're going to look at some images of what that looks like on the breast. Oh, go back to that, go back, go back. Um, so 15 to 25% of breast cancer is overdiagnosed. Um, the national cost is, uh, is spent is $17 billion. Our breasts make more money than any other part of the body. Our breasts are monetized. I'm sorry to tell you that. But our breasts make money. Um, $15 billion is spent on breast cancer research, but only 1% to 3% is spent on breast cancer prevention. So what will we do now that mammograms have been proven to be um, ineffective and harmful. There are several studies out, but the two longest ones, um, the American uh, Journal of American Medicine, 30-year study, British Medical Journal, 25-year study, they showed that breast cancer is overdiagnosed, it's overtreated. Many women that had ductal carcinoma, it turns out that it wasn't cancer. They've had the treatment, the mastectomies, the radiation, the chemotherapy, and for every thousand women screened, one cancer is found and four women get cancer from the ionizing radiation. So many doctors have said if this were a drug, it would have been pulled off the market years ago. So um, sort of I think 2012, they have decided in Switzerland to abolish mammograms. So again, but we have, we have ultrasound. And some cities, it's like New York City, has three and four D ultrasound. So if a woman is looking at a biopsy, it's very exact. So there are safe ways to screen for um, breast abnormalities. Um, next slide, please. So what are mammograms? They emit ionizing radiation. That is the worst kind of radiation that we can get. 80% um, of biopsies are false positives. Now that's what these studies have found. So what does this mean? That means that 80% of what's found on a biopsy, whether it's a lump, a bump, or a cyst, then it's a false positive. They said it's nothing there. 
because they're looking at anatomy. Thermography is what we're going to talk about is looking at heat. So the good news is that 80% of what's found in our breast are benign because we just live in a toxic world right now. Uh, mammogram guidelines are being challenged. They're saying don't start till you're 52, but they're still pushing it for women 40. But now what are women going to do now that breasts are being exposed to all these toxins and chemicals that a woman's not going to start being radiated at the age of 20. And at 52, it's a little late in life. So they uh, will offer if a woman has dense breasts. And it's really big out here in Long Island. It's called 3D tomosynthesis. And that is delivering 30% more ionizing radiation if a woman has dense breasts. So that's something you might want to consider avoiding. Um, the National uh, Cancer Institute said radiation is a risk factor for malignant tumors. And four films, that's usually um, one session, that's called radiation absorbed, that's equal to 1,000 chest x-rays. So if a woman has had 10 mammograms over her lifetime, the radiation is cumulative, and that is breaking down our DNA. Radiation is radiation. You know, it's, you know, even when you go to the airports, we have to be careful of radiation. Medical radiation is dangerous. Um, so if cancer is present, the extreme compression during a mammogram can help cancerous cells to spread. That's from the Lancet um, Journal. That's a very prestigious uh, medical journal. So think about it. If you have a, a balloon filled with water, and you put something heavy on top of it and press it, what's going to happen? There's a chance that it can just go. So next slide, please. So there's no available testing for women under 40, but there's 47,000 cases in younger women. And when it's found in a younger woman, it's usually a little late. Because, you know, they're in the throes of life, they're not thinking about it. And, you know, it's good, this is our children. You know, this is, this, is, this is my children's age. It's probably your children's age, right? in their 30s, 20s, and 30s. So mm -hmm. this is an inflammatory breast cancer of a nursing mother. This will never be found on a mammogram because it is just heat. So um, the conventional detection is an anatomical approach. So if it's a lump, a bump, or a cyst, they're looking at something that can block um, an x-ray beam. So it has to be an anatomy. So that's an ultrasound, an MRI, an x-ray, or a mammogram. So it's either, yes, you have cancer, no, you don't. So really what they're saying when you get a mammogram is, no, it's not big enough to be seen, keep coming back every year, and when it's big enough, we can treat it. So thermography. Thermography, um, it detects physiology as opposed to anatomy. So when you're in school, you take anatomy and physiology, but in this case, it's physiology and anatomy. Because first comes the heat, first comes the inflammation, before it turns into an anatomical structure. Um, so there's no radiation, there's no compression, and it can be used at any age. Um, I've had mothers bring their children in. They didn't even bring their animals in. You know, they've used it for horses and dogs. Anything that's alive has heat. The military's used it forever. Um, so it reduces unnecessary biopsies, and it's an adjunct. Here is the key. It is an adjunct to an ultrasound or an MRI. It is not a standalone. Neither is an MRI, neither is a mammogram, neither is an ultrasound. It has to be done in tandem. So you think about the yin and the yang, right? First there's anatomy and physiology. It has to be done together. Oh, let me go back to that slide. So what they're looking at on that left slot side, of it, the left slide on the left, is the, what a thermogram is. A thermogram just means it a, it's a, captures an image of heat and they're looking at the bilateral heat differences. Now, we're one of the few companies that are using the grayscale. It looks like a black and white photograph, and 60% of the findings are in the grayscale. They're looking at um, vascular patterns. They're looking at um, and the, the heat that comes up from toxins actually will look like spots on the breast. So it's, a, it's an excellent way to monitor just how toxic our breasts are. Let's go to the next slide, please. So what exactly is cancer? I mean, we're living in crazy times that if it's increasing by 30% in the next 10 years, it's like Russian roulette. But we all have cancer. We all have cancer within our body. We can have cancer right now and not even know, but we have a strong immune system. So all those renegade cells are like Pac-Man. We have Pac-Man that's eating them up. But once there's a break in the immune system, 
then guess what? The health starts to deteriorate. Cancer starts to um, build, uh, starts building toward a tumor. So this is how it works. So angioneogenesis is the beginning of a new blood supply. So let's just say here's a person who now the immune system is weakened and now the tumor is starting and you'll see this over here. I hope you can see this, Facebook guys, can you see that? So now we have the cameras picking up heat. It doesn't say that's cancer, it's just inflammation. And we know that inflammation is the beginning of chronic disease. There's many things that we could take that are anti-inflammatory, change our diets, there's curcumin turmeric, um, there is you know, going more into plant-based, alkaline, so many ways to change the pH balance of the body and bring down the inflammation. But it could take years before now it has a blood vessel growth. Now it has a signature of heat and that is considered cancer. The camera picks that up, the heat seeking camera picks that up and our doctors will say, go to a breast surgeon. This is when we start to change our life. It may take years before it's big enough to be seen on a mammogram. Because right now, all these cells are on fire. Cells on fire, on fire, on fire. But it could be years before it coalesces into an anatomical structure that blocks an x-ray beam. So this here, this is the period that we can start to change our lifestyle, change our um, start taking food state supplementation. There's many things that we can do. And there's, I'm gonna talk about some really cutting edge blood tests that your doctor probably doesn't know about. So next slide, please. So this is a situation of a woman who I had worked with years ago and she had gone to um, have thermography and it showed that she had something in her um, axillary area right up in here and it's a gutter breast surgeon and her doctor up in Albany didn't believe in thermography, so they gave her two mammograms. She had a clean bill of health because they're still looking at an anatomical structure. She still had the heat there. She was on fire with the cancer. So she comes back seven years later with stage three cancer. She said, had I listened to the thermography? But the good news is she went out to Chicago and she went to the Block Center for Integrative Oncology spend a lot of money and she's fine. she's fine so she but she wishes she had taken another route so this is um, a situation with a woman with dense breast dense breast with a mammogram is like looking for a snowball in a snowstorm so it's true uh, so actually there's a federal law that requires uh, now that if a mammogram provider must tell a woman she has dense breast it means five, it's just dense and you can't really see through it. So in this picture, there was a woman who had a, uh, a tumor, and you can see the tumor is right here. And we don't have a little, uh, little no, we don't have one of those things. Hmm. Have a pen or something? Yeah, yeah let me have it, let me have a pen. Want my pen? No, you take the notes, okay. that's good. <laughs> hey, one of those sticks they have in Catholic school. All right, class, over here. So here, I don't know if you can see that, but that is a tumor right there. There's a tumor, it looks like a chicken leg. And they couldn't see it in the mammogram because it was just, it's connective tissue, so they can't, it's very dense. So 49% um, of women have dense breasts, particularly younger women. And uh, mammogram sensitivity is as low as 27%. So 75% of dense, bleh, dense, dense breasted women, <laughs> Um, if they uh, rely solely on thermography, they're going to have false negatives, which means they're not going to see it, and then it could come within years and not already have breast cancer. So we just need to use every tool in the box at this point. Okay, next one, please. So there are over 800 articles on, published on breast thermography and breast cancer. Some of the women were followed up to 20 years. And you have to ask, why are we not using this with insurance? It was covered by insurance until 1984. It's cleared by the FDA in 1982, but the mammography lobby kind of put it out, and then it fell under um, misinformation for 10 years, saying that there were too many false positives, because they'd say, well, here's cancer, but yeah, they couldn't find it on a mammogram, because they're still looking at heat, and, and mammograms doesn't look at heat. But 10 years later, 
they find that the cancer would come up in exactly the same spot that was found in the suspicious thermogram. So um, here's what some doctors say about thermography. Dr. Christian Northrup is a huge proponent of, th of, um, of uh, thermography. She said, why on earth would anybody want to radiate healthy breast? Right? I think about that. So every woman should include breast thermography as a part of their regular um, breast health care. I have recommended this technology for years, and that's Dr. Susan Lark. She's a, um, a distinguished author and proponent of women's health. And this is Dr. John Kaiserlink. He's an oncologist, MD, PhD. He said, quality control infrared images heighten our index of suspicion in cases where clinical or mammographic, mammographic findings are equivocal or non-suspicious. Suspic oh, I'm having a hard time talking tonight. <laughs> I just one quick question. Non non-specific and signal the need for further investigation rather than observation. Yes, that's the question. The, the name of the first doctor who you Oh, followed. Dr. Christian Northrup. Dr. Christie? Christian. Christian, Christian. Northrup. She's, oh. Didn't she write our bodies, our, our bodies, our women, our bodies, something, our bodies? You know, she has a popular book. I can't remember. Yeah, a very popular book, but she's been a proponent of thermography for years. Excellent woman. Um, and she talks a lot about menopause and empowering women after a certain age. But, you know, we're not all bags after 55, you know? Mm -hmm. So, the next one, please. So, this is what we are seeing so much of estrogen dominance that comes from all of these foreign estrogens. And classically, they will look like leopard spots. Now, let me ask you, what woman doesn't have a leopard handbag, uh, panties, maybe some shoes, a scarf? We like leopard, but there's something about leopard. And when we are having particularly a hot flash, it comes up looking an infant covered like a leopard on the lips, on the ears. So there's something very feline about women. Isn't that kind of neat? Yeah. I mean, I think twice when you put on those little leopard panties. <laughs> but, um, so in this case, this is only seen with the grayscale, and this woman obviously is very toxic, so those dark spots are the receptor sites on her breast, and they are loaded with environmental estrogens. Now, she could have her own estrogen, but there are certain things in the plant-based kingdom, like sulforaphane that comes from broccoli, dim comes from broccoli, that has that innate wisdom to go to those receptor sites and metabolize it off. You know, I mean, there's ways to actually start to metabolize this, but we don't want to leave these toxins on the body because we never know when it's going to flip a switch. So the more weight a person carries, because um, adipose tissue, our fat is called the third estrogen. So just like we don't eat the fat on a fish, because we know it's where all the mercury and everything, all the, the toxins are stored. Same thing with a fat body, you know, particularly with belly fat, is that where these toxins like to reside? And we see it all over this woman, on her arms, her legs. I mean, that is a wake up call. Everybody should know the toxic level of what our breasts look like. Question. Do you mind just going over like what causes estrogen dominance like in day-to-day -day life, products, environmental yeah, oh, pollution? Thanks, okay. Yes, thank you very much. So Sephora is doing such harm to the, to the women in this country. I will guarantee you almost, if you're not having natural skincare products and natural makeup, everything you put on your face, your body, beauty care industry, now men are having their beauty care, you know, slathering and they're all endocrine disruptors. Who would ever think? cheek color, eyeshadow, uh, foundation, hairspray, uh, even nail polish, they're all deodorant, endocrine disruptors. So plastic, nice. there's uh, a study that was at Duke University and they had put breast cancer uh, cells in, um, in uh, test tubes and they found that they were proliferating and they found that it was coming, it was leaching from the plastic in the test tube. So what they did, they took household plastics, they chopped them up, you know, your baggies and your Tupperware and everything, and they put it uh, in a saline solution, and then they put it in a Petri dish with breast cancer cells. They proliferated like they were on fire. Now, this is the other thing. When we eat our Goya beans or whatever we eat from a can, 
they found that the bisphenol A, the plastic within the cans, increased those breast cancer stem cell, uh, breast cancer cells 50% faster. 50%. So when you go to the health food store, you get Amy's and you can get, um, well, there's a few of them, but they'll say BPA free, but one I think is called Field Day, if you're getting your mm -hmm. garbanzos. It is so tiny. Why don't they make that big? Because that's a selling feature. That's a true selling feature to have BPA free cans. So think about that. So that's where a lot of the plastics are coming from. And also, Susan G. Coleman is now denying that there's any connection between BPA plastics and breast cancer. Now they've done, they've done biopsies around the country and every biopsy has BPA in it. We are exposed to it. It's like we can't get away from it. There's a book called Breast. Uh, it's a great book, it's a history of breast. And, um, and the woman who wrote it, her and her daughter spent two weeks sequestered in their home. They didn't do anything with plastic. They had taken tests before, blood tests, and then two weeks later, their body burden had dropped considerably because unless you go to a farmer's market and you take your own bag, everything is wrapped in plastic. Every single thing is wrapped in plastic. But fortunately, there's change now. We can get um, saran wrap that's now BPA free. So there's a movement. But you know, the average person doesn't really have that kind of money to be buying extra because it's still a little pricey. Um, this is a man with estrogen dominance. He looks like a leopard from head to toe. I was working with a gentleman recently and he's a vegan and he was covered head to toe like a leopard. But he had a genetic factor called MFTHR and it doesn't allow the pathways of detoxification to open. So he was just he was getting backed up more and more and more with this estrogen. So now he's working with that uh, genetic factor, he's taking certain nutrients, supplementation, and he's able to now detox. So, let's talk about bras. That's the first thing you want to take off when you get home at night, besides your shoes. <laughs> there's any truth to this, the rumor has it that Victoria's Secret is going out of business. They said the breast size has, has increased over the last hundred years. I mean, we have double K bras, and the wires underneath this woman has not had a bra on for 20 minutes. That is all lymphatic backup. There's a book out called Dress to Kill. Fabulous book. It's the history of how our breasts have been manipulated by what men want us to look like. 2000 BC. I mean, women have been pushed and gouged and breast up to our neck. You know, the underwires are terrible. And women have had broken spines. You think in the Victorian ages they wore corsets, they were fainting because they couldn't breathe, they were getting tuberculosis because the little avioles, they couldn't exchange the oxygen. I mean, it's crazy. Women, I worked with a woman, she was large busted. She had been sleeping in her bra for 20 years. How can you do that? How can you do that? I mean, it's beyond my comprehension. So there are now bras that are coming out that are actually encourage lymphatic drainage. They are not too tight. So if your bra is too tight, go to Joann's, go to someplace, Michael's, and I don't know about Michael's, Joann's have it, but you get a bra extender. You can get the one snap, two snap, you get the sexy black, whatever, but don't have that because that is blocking your lymphatic backup. Oh, let's talk about Let's talk about root canals. Has anybody out there seen that movie, Root Cause? It was, no pun intended, it was yanked off Netflix. <laughs> and um, it is about root canals. And it goes back to 1910, 1920. Uh, Dr. Weston Price, he's a dentist. He traveled to nine groups of people around the world who had their ancestral diet. Their teeth were not crowded. They still had their wisdom teeth. Their teeth were perfect. They didn't have degenerative diseases. And as soon as we start working with root canals, there's no way that they can clean those tubulars out. Those, and what they found, he would take the tooth of the infected tooth of the person, there's a big connection to breast cancer, uterine cancer, every kind of disease in the body. I mean, it's pretty, it's a, it's a squeamish film to watch. I actually saw it with a dentist. But what they found, 
is that they would take that infected tooth and put it under the skin of a rabbit, and that rabbit died sometimes within 48 hours of exactly what the person had wrong with their body. So you'd say, well, how come it's affecting our breasts? Well, you think that every tooth in our body sits on a meridian, an acupuncture meridian point. And the ones that run through the front of the body, like the long, small intestine, is it small intestine in the front? Danielle said it. The ones that run in the front of the body, it runs through the breast. So I've had a couple of cases that women who had problems with their breasts, as soon as they had the root canal taken out, it was gone. So it's called root cause. You can watch it on, uh, uh, I think, Amazon or YouTube, but it's worth watching. Again, it's a little squeamish, but hey, I had mine taken out. Okay. So in this case, uh, she had leakage from the oral cavity into the lymphatic system, so there it's right there. We see almost every patient we see has some kind of oral inflammation. And we are asking, well, is it because now it's just because the mouth is an extension of the stomach? Why are we seeing this inflammation? I mean, it's obvious when you have some kind of pathology of the mouth, but it's very good to at least get that upper body screening so you can see what's taking place in the mouth and have a biological dentist that you go to. So this is a man who had breast cancer, so it's not just a woman's problem. And he had it in the axillary nodes right in here. It was shown, it was um, found in the gray scale. Can we see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's very important for follow-up. If there's something suspicious, our doctors will recommend a three-month follow-up. And that means you better be back in three months because uh, you don't want to wait. And this woman had a follow-up and she came back about a year later. And you could see that the, um, that the inflammation of cancer had actually increased in size and temperature. So follow-ups are very important. Usually it's a six-month follow-up, but you want to get to once a year as a screening. So this was a woman who, um, she was trying to identify the margins of stage three lobular carcinoma, and it was uh, associated with axillary lymph nodes. And out of the 14, they had removed the two that were metastasized were right there. So they took the other uh, 12 out unnecessarily. So here is, this is, this is where we're moving into the positive things that we can do for our breast, because now we have time to change our diet, start taking supplementation, change our thought forms, you know, exercise, do whatever it does to increase our health. Here's a woman that had a massive heat on her left breast, and had she waited for 10 years, that would have been cancer. But in six months, through supplementation, nutraceuticals, and through exercise and diet and lifestyle, her temperature dropped from 1.78 to 1.30. That is prevention. So again, uh, nutrition, nutraceuticals, lifestyle changes. Here's a woman, we used to give it on a one to 10, now we don't really do that, but on a, at that time she was, they thought she was in fibrocystic breast, she was a number 10, and in six months she dropped down to a, to a five. So again, that's prevention. Took, uh, she took her health in control. This was uh, a woman who had a lump in her left breast, and they actually said, okay, she said get a mammogram, um, and to consider a biopsy. She is a homeopath, and she opted not to do that. She didn't, she said she barely left her kitchen for, um, for three months. She had a three-month follow-up. She did the Rife machine, she did chaga mushrooms, she did iodine, she did vitamin D, she detoxed, she made her, she was green, 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 juicing, juicing, juicing. In three months, she came back and they said, see you in a year. Isn't that incredible? Mm -hmm. See you in a year. And that was her breast there. She's a good friend of mine, and she keeps coming back every year, see you in a year. I said, Lord, don't stop taking that. Make sure you keep taking those things because it's just good for the health. But she opted out. This is a cyst or ovarian carcinoma. It's a very interesting case. This streak, our doctor said, you know, that could be cancer. She went to her doctor. She said, well, it's probably just a cyst. Because they don't really know what um, ovarian cancer looks like in its 
early stages, they only see it in the late stages. So she, she lived with it for a year, and she said, you know, I just feel something is growing inside of me. So she went and had this, very important, write this down, it's called the RGCC test. They send the blood to Greece, it's called the RGCC Greece test, and what they do, they expose that, um, that blood that has a tumor, and they expose it to about 50 different compounds from the that are nutraceuticals, that are plant-based, let's say the sulforaphane, poly-MBA, the DIM, uh, uh, I forget, but there's a whole bunch of them that they, that they expose that to. And then you get a chart that they actually charted, this works 20%, this works 30%, this works this, this works 50%. So you can actually create the protocols that work best for that kind of cancer. They can actually do it for certain chemotherapies. She was suggested to do palladium chemotherapy, but her doctor said, you'll have to do a heavy metal detox. So she opted not to cut it out. One doctor said cut it out. The doctor in California says no, because if it hits the air, it's gonna spread. So it's been two years. She did the RGCC test again, and her blood came back. I mean, she's actually, she's become a friend, but God bless her. She said, had I been on a plant-based diet every day, she said it would probably have been a, a lot quicker, but she said she was Italian, she couldn't get up some of that food, so uh, anyway. So that's, that's, that's the good thing, is that people can take control of their health. So thermography is not just for the breast, but we can use it for carotid artery, for vascular screening, for thyroid, for circulation, um, vein thrombosis, uh, nerve pathology, back pain. Chiropractors have been using thermography for years. You can see when the body's out of alignment. Um, intestinal inflammation. I think that's actually the last slide. I think that's the last slide. So, you're on the other side there. We can't talk to you and ask you if you have any questions, but I can answer questions if you have any. Um, no, let's back that up, we don't want to go to Oh, okay, here we go, the last, the last slide. So I'm with Breast Thermography International, but I'm also a member of Professional Academy of Clinical Thermologists, and we have three doctors that always review these reports. And our lead doctor, Dr. Sepper, he has a PhD, he's a, he's a GYM, but he has a PhD in thermology. He's from Russia, they've been using this in Russia for years, he has 38 research papers on thermography and breast cancer and ovarian cancer. So we have, it's um, best, some of the best doctors working at this. So you're in good hands. So thank you for joining us. I hope you're comfortable in your air conditioned um, houses right now. <laughs> thank, thank you, everybody. You so